Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Blender SideQuest. As discussed in the previous episode, today we'll be making a spherical effector. Before we get started, I really want to thank my patrons who've been supporting this channel. If you want access to all of my project files and all of my asset packs, make sure to subscribe to my Patreon and this channel as well. Now, without wasting any more of your time, let's get into it. Now, a spherical effector is like a planar effector, but instead of the gradient affecting a singular direction, it affects everything everywhere all at once. But seriously though, it uh, creates a gradient from the center of the sphere to every point on the surface, which means it creates a spherical gradient. Now inside of Blender, let's quickly set up a grid and instance a couple cubes on the grid. Let me create a null object and bring it into my node group. I'll change its object type to relative. Next, I'll add a position node and use a vector math node, set it to subtract Plug the location input into the second socket. Now I'll add a vector rotate node. Set it to Euler, check inward and plug the rotation into the vector. Now some of you may be wondering that if it's a sphere, why do I need a rotation vector if it's going to be same in all direction? But just wait a second, I'll tell you why. Now the next thing that we need to add is a scale feature so that if we increase the size of the null, it affects our spherical gradient. So for that, we're going to add a vector math node going to set it to divide and plug the scale value into it. Next I'll add a gradient node and set it to spherical which will create our gradient that we need and at last we'll add a clamp node to clamp the value from 0 to 1. Now let's talk about the rotation thing. Yes, if I rotate a sphere in any axis I choose to, it'll be the same. But what happens if I first choose to scale it in a single axis? So let me press S and X to scale it in just the X axis. Now, if I rotate it, it will give us a different gradient. So it was worth it. Now you can use this gradient to make various effects like this wave and vortex deformer I've been working on. The project files are on Patreon. You can obviously download them, but I'll make a video when I'm done with it. Okay, let's look at some easier examples. Let us add a scale instances node. Let's add a value node, set it to one and plug it into the scale. Now add a math node, set it to multiply and multiply the scale value to the gradient. Now the closest instance is white on the gradient and is scaled to one. And the further you go, the scale reduces. It seems logical, but what if you want to reverse the effect? What you can do is add a map range node and flip the max and min values. And there you have it, a flipped effect. Another thing you can do is add a stored name attribute node. If you're still using instances, change it to instance or if you've realized your geometry for any reason, change it to point. Plug the gradient into the named attribute and let's call it grad. Now in the shader editor, add an attribute node, switch between instance and geometry depending on what you have in GeoNodes. Now plug it into a color ramp and change the colors to whatever you want and you can create sort of heat maps effect and uh, selection effect, whatever you want, you know. Another cool thing that I learned while experimenting with this effect is that if I realize my geometry, add a subdivision surface node, increase its level and play with the edge crease value, it controls the smoothness of our uh, edges and I can effectively use the effector to control the smoothness of our subdivision of the objects that are in the proximity. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I think that's a great effect and that is also it for this episode. And that's it for this episode. Do consider checking out my Patreon if you want access to tons of project files and assets. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.